I'm going to teach you how to make some Maltese Village cookies, uh, which I am going to use to make Easter nest uh, cookies. Um, but I'm also going to show you how traditionally uh, the Maltese would decorate these. Um, my mom's side of the family is Maltese, so my nana would make these um, cookies often at Easter time, other times of the year as well. But these cookies uh, definitely made an appearance at Easter. Uh, so it, it was fun to create a little nest out of them um, to surprise the kitties at Easter time. And it's kind of stuck and becomes something that I make every year um, as well as the traditional form. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first I've measured out everything and I've put the recipe up at the beginning of this video so that you can follow along. So first we're gonna mix all of the dry ingredients into a bowl. So I've already measured out three and a half cups of flour, just all purpose flour. Um, I sift it just to kind of take out any of the clumps. So I'm just gonna pour this into the larger bowl and sift it as I go. Okay, so we have the flour in the bowl. I'm also gonna add one and a quarter cups of granulated white sugar. And then we're gonna add one and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And just a sprinkle of cinnamon. So depending on how much you like cinnamon, it's just supposed to be a little bit, um, but you can add as much or as little as you like, depending on how much of a fan you are of cinnamon. My crew here doesn't mind a small amount. So those are the dry ingredients that we're going to in include first. And then we're going to include the rind of an orange and a lemon. So one orange, one lemon. I washed the orange and lemon first just to make sure there was no germs on it. And if there was any dirt or uh, I had a little bit of uh, something, something on my orange. So I got that off and uh, I just used a food grater. Um, and took off the rind. So that's the outside skin of the orange. So you just have kind of a soft orange left underneath. So I've already done my orange and my grater. I'm just gonna do the lemon. This is probably people's favorite part of these cookies is to taste the lemon and the um, orange in it. I know it's funny when my kids first tried them, that was the first thing that they said. Mommy, I taste orange, I taste lemon. Um, so it's really cool that they could identify that when eating the cookie. They also smell really good. I don't have a sense of smell, so I'm taking everybody's word for it. Uh, but when I bake these, I often have little visitors in the kitchen because they smell the fruit. take off obviously the top of the lemon or the orange if there is uh, a little harder nub here at the end you're just going to do the skin the rind as best as you can so that you've pretty much got it off the entire orange and the entire lemon so I'm going to add the rind to our dry ingredients to mix them with my whisk just to spread them around evenly and then you could squeeze that orange and lemon for some juice my kids tend to like juice after I make these village cookies so um, don't waste don't throw it out just cut it in half and squeeze it out and use it either in your baking or to drink um, so after we add that, we're going to start adding the wet ingredients. So I already have everything um, out. The first thing is going to be a quarter cup, a half a cup of butter. And so what we're going to do with the butter um, is 
just add it in and then kind of work it into the dry ingredients. So if you have a whole brick of butter, it's a quarter of the brick. So half of the brick is one cup. To get a half a cup, you cut that in half. So I've already done that. I take my butter out overnight uh, when I wanna bake with it so that it's room temperature, so that it's easier to work with. Um, and if you forget to do that, the simplest thing to do would be to put uh, the amount that you need on a dish or in a bowl and just put it on melt for a few seconds in your microwave just to get it. You don't want it to be liquidy because that'll change the texture of your dough. Um, you want it to be room temperature, kind of like a whipped butter, butter texture. So I already have that ready. So I'm going to add that to my dry ingredients. Okay, so once I've added this, I'm going to mix the butter in first before adding the other wet ingredients. So you can, traditionally you would use your hands. Um, I've done it with the mixer and it's worked well. Um, so that's kind of the way that I go. Um, but certainly if you wanted to use your hands, go ahead. You're trying to make it kind of a sandy, gritty um, texture. going to have some flour come out of your bowl unless you use a big bowl. Um, so I'm just going to show you the consistency of this. So it's kind of sandy. It literally looks like sand on the beach and you can see the bits of the grind still in there but all of the butter is now incorporated into the dry ingredients. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add in um, the eggs to form the actual dough. So you're going to use three large eggs. And then I'm going to mix those together. We need to add are the extracts. So you're going to use um, vanilla extract. You can use pure or artificial. You're going to use one teaspoon of this. Put that in. And then you're going to use one teaspoon of anisette or anise extract, and it's clear. Um, I'm using pure extract. But I'm sure there's also an artificial, and either would work. So you're going to do one teaspoon of that. So this gives it a nice anise flavor. A lot of Maltese baking has that anise flavor to it. Kind of a signature thing. So I've added that liquid and I'm gonna just mix it again. So 
now what we're going to do is this is still pretty loose, the flour, um, with all of the ingredients in it. So it doesn't quite look like a dough yet. So this is where you're going to have to use your hands to get it to start taking some shape. It is certainly moist enough that it will start taking some shape but you're gonna need your hands to do this and not the mixer. So what I would suggest, if you're finding that it's too dry, have some water on hand. And if you wet your hands with water, you can start to form the dough a little bit uh, easier. So I'm gonna start forming this so you can see. You can also add just a little bit more butter if it's really um, dry. You might have just used a little bit too much flour or it could be just the humidity in your house. Um, but usually if you just leave a little bit of water on hand, this is where you're going to start getting the dough balls. So I'm actually just going to add a little bit in here just to speed along the process. And so while I bake this, I'm going to turn the oven on to 350. I use a convection oven and I put it on 350 and it works no problem. Um, and when I use um, other ovens, I've always put in 350 and it's turned out just fine. So your hands, when you use them, are going to get a little bit doughy, but don't fret. You don't need to make a huge dough. You could just kind of work in sections with this because what we're gonna do is we're gonna split these up to make the cookies. So if you just work a little bit at a time. If you don't have butter at home, you could also use margarine. So if you wanted to use a half a cup of margarine instead of butter, that works as well. I think the original recipe that I had actually used margarine, but we're we're a butter family, so I switched it out and it worked just fine. And if your hands start to get a little too much from the dough, just keep a little bit of flour off to the side. And spread some on your table and just dry off your hands a little bit. So then you can take what you've already made and I'm going to start you off with that before I continue. So just knead it a little bit. If it starts sticking to your countertop, you can add just a little bit of flour. But you're gonna make a nice dough. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into little balls to make our shapes. So traditionally, the shapes would be um, either some long strips, um, circles, or you can put them, you can form them into S's, kind of like an S cookie. Um, one year we did these in letters, I let the kids just shape them into letters just because the consistency is kind of like Play-Doh. Um, so they were able just to form them. They do spread when they bake, um, but typically I would do circles or some strips. Now because I'm going to do the Easter nests with these, I'm going to do circles. Um, you don't need cookie cutters for this, you're just going to use your hands. So I'm happy with my dough, so all I'm going to do is take a little piece of it and roll it out. There's no magic size to this. If you would like larger cookies, add a little bit more. And if you want smaller ones, don't use as much dough, they will rise a little bit. So you don't want to make them too, too big, unless you do. Um, so I would say just a bit bigger than a toonie would be a good size. And so then I just kind of, after I've rolled it into a ball, I just pat it just a little bit, just so it's not so tall, so it can bake evenly. 
and then put it on my cookie sheet. So make a few of these with you. And you'll see the bits of the rind, that's totally fine. They'll bake really nicely into the um, cookie and it's not like you're like, oh, <laughs> there's a piece of rind in my mouth. Um, it's, uh, it's incorporated really well into the cookie. Tastes great. So I would say leave a little bit of space, about an inch in between each of your cookies so that when they rise, they don't connect to one another. And that is all. So we're going to put these in the oven at 350 for about 12 to 14 minutes. So you're gonna see that they'll turn a nice golden brown. So you don't want to get the bottoms too dark, um, but you do want to see a little bit of that golden yellow at the bottom. But 12 to 14 minutes should do you. And this will make about this size cookie, this will make probably about 40 to 50 cookies with the one batch, if you do it this size. So I'm going to pop these in the oven and then we'll move on to decorating. So I just pulled my cookies out of the oven. They were in there for 14 minutes. And I'll just show you the bottom of them. So that's how the bottom should look when they're done. So just that nice light golden color. They don't look wet. If they look a little wet, then you know that they need a few more minutes. And so then I also cut out a few of the traditional shapes that I'll show you how to decorate also, not in the nest style. So kind of just the long strip, the round circle, and then the S, so kind of like an S cookie. And like I said, the um, dough expands a little bit when it bakes, but you can see that leaving an inch between was great. So we're gonna just let these cool on the counter um, for about a half an hour, and then I'll be ready to ice them. So the last step is going to be decorating our cookies. So I'm going to show you a few options to do this. So the Easter nest, uh, I use a green nest. I know nests are brown, but uh, this looks a little more springy and Eastery if you can use like green grass. Um, so what I've done is I've taken my royal icing um, and the recipe is on my YouTube channel if you want to try that. So I've put it in a uh, piping bag and using a coupler, I've attached a grass piping tip. Now, if you don't have a grass piping tip, that's okay. I'm gonna show you some other uh, options with the royal icing using another tip. So I'm just going to take the piping bag. And I'm just going to squeeze and lift. and lift. You don't want the grass too tall because the royal icing will dry and we don't want it to be too stiff and when you try to bite into it it's going to be too hard. So just doing some small grass. You can go around as far as you want. And then I'm going to take some mini eggs. You can use um, chocolate. You can use jelly beans, anything else you want. And while the icing is still wet, I'm just going to place 
some eggs onto the nest. You can see that. Okay. So that's one way using the royal icing with the grass tip. So if you don't have a grass tip, no worries. I'm gonna take this off using the same royal icing. I have just a regular uh, flower tip, like for a cupcake uh, piping. So I'm going to take that and almost like I'm icing a cupcake, decorate it that way. So I'm just going to show you that first. So like that. And then we're going to put, I'm just going to put two in here have that okay so that's the second type so this is using royal icing and remember the royal icing will harden so this will be a little stiffer when you bite into it if you don't have royal icing at home and you just want something quick if you want to make a buttercream icing if you want to use um, icing that comes in containers and just spread it on or pipe it on and then put the little eggies totally fine too just remember those won't stack on top of each other but if you keep them flat on a tray or put them single layer in a container, airtight, they're gonna be great. So, if you don't wanna use icing, but you wanna try something else, something super simple, is to take some um, powder, just uh, powdered sugar, icing sugar, and a little bit of warm water. So we're just gonna do a little bit of warm water at a time to get the right texture. So this would be more close to how the Maltese typically decorate these village cookies. don't usually do that with royal icing. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. So it flows a little bit nicer. So this is just some icing sugar. Use as much as you'd like with a little bit of water. So when I add that, it just looks like that coming off slowly. It's not dripping off too much. So I'm just going to add just a touch more water. And then using a butter knife or just a clean finger, you're going to take a little bit of the icing and just put it on the top. You don't want too, too much. You don't want a big, thick layer because what we're going to do is dip this into some toppings to get the Easter egg look. So here's some options. I've got some donut sprinkles. So just the green donut sprinkles. If you want it to look more nesty, you could use brown donut sprinkles. So I'm just going to lightly ice this. So this was just icing sugar and a little bit of warm water. You could also use milk if you want, but icing sugar and water works great and you're just going to dip it in. So if you like sprinkles, which lots of kids do, this will be the way to go. Now, because this is all sprinkled now, it's gonna be hard to get the eggies on top. So I'm just gonna put the bottom of the egg into the icing and stick it on. Just a little drop. And there you go. And so then, Another option would be to use granulated sugar. So you can buy it in bulk um, already to decorate cupcakes and cookies and other things, or you can make it. So if you have granulated sugar, put some in a baggie and then take your icing gel color or you can take food coloring. So I'm just gonna do food coloring because more people have that kicking around at home. And just put a few drops while this is in the baggie. Zip the baggie up. And you're just going to mush it so that the color gets spread around into all of the pieces of sugar. And then you're going to add more if you want it more dark green, less if you just want a pastel color. Totally up to you how you color this. This is a fun job for kids.
And this will keep if you just let this dry out a little bit. So kind of open it, let it air out for a few hours. You can just zip up the bag after and then save it for your next baking adventure. So I'm just going to dump out a little bit onto a plate. And we're going to put a little bit of icing on the top, spread it where we want to spread it. lot of sugar y'all but it does the trick so that's four different ways to make the Easter egg nest cookies I also just wanted to show you um, some of the other traditional shapes I guess that these uh, Maltese Village cookies are often found in so the circle which we've been doing kind of just a long stick and S's. So I would use just the icing with the icing sugar and the water and put it where you want it. And then just dip it into whatever topping you want to use. You could also do a little design So just put a little strip of icing where you want it and you've got two strips and then for the next color add a little bit more icing and then dip that in the second color and you've got that. So that's more classic uh, Maltese Village cookie compared to doing the nests. So this you could make kind of any time, any around, any color you want, and they're delicious. Happy baking.